this is a review of absolute value equations. You need to recall that absolute value of a is equal to a when a is greater than or equal to zero, but it is equal to negative a when a itself is less than zero. If you are asked to solve an absolute value equation of this type, the first thing you need to do is isolate the absolute value part. To do that, you need to divide both sides by that 2. If you do that, this is what you get. You divide this side by 2, you get absolute value of 3x minus 1. When you divide this side by 2, remember to divide both terms by 2. So 2x over 2, that gives you x, plus 5 over 2. In the next step, you need to simplify this absolute value part using this definition. Note the only difference between this and this is that instead of a, you have 3x minus 1. So to simplify absolute value of 3x minus 1, simply stick in 3x minus 1 wherever you have an a here, 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 and here. If you do that, this is what you get. Absolute value of 3x minus 1 is equal to 3x minus 1, provided 3x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And this, then, is that first line. Now let's focus on the second line. Absolute value of 3x minus 1 is the opposite of 3x minus 1 when 3x minus 1 itself is less than 0. So what we are saying is that we can rewrite absolute value of 3x minus 1 as 3x minus 1 only when 3x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. But what does that tell us about x? That tells us that for this to hold true, x has to be greater than or equal to one third. How about here? This line tells us that we can rewrite absolute value of 3x minus 1 as the opposite of 3x minus 1 only when 3x minus 1 itself is less than 0. In other words, x has to be less than one third for this to be true. So that's what I have here. Absolute value of 3x minus 1 is equal to 3x minus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 1 third, and it's the opposite of 3x minus 1 when x itself is less than 1 third. Now, actually, when we are just solving absolute value equations, we don't need this part. We need it when we are graphing absolute value functions. So let's cover that part up for the moment. Going back over here, Absolute value of 3x minus 1 then can be simplified into two of these expressions, 3x minus 1 or opposite of 3x minus 1. So that's what we are going to do next. This has been rewritten as 3x minus 1, also as negative of 3x minus 1. Keep the right-hand side as it is. See, there it is. There it is. So, our absolute value equation has been simplified into two linear equations without any absolute value signs, which you can easily solve. This, you can rewrite this equation. You can rewrite by multiplying both sides by negative 1. So, there is that equation. This equation becomes... 3x minus 1 equal to negative x minus 5 over 2. When you multiply this side by negative 1, remember to multiply both terms by negative 1. The next step, you will try to isolate x by subtracting x from both sides and adding 1 to both sides for this equation. And for this equation, you need to add x to both sides and add 1 to both sides. That gives you this. 3x minus x is equal to 5 over 2 plus 1, or 3x plus x is equal to negative 5 over 2 plus 1. 
keep on isolating x and simplifying so this if you simplify you get 2x equal to 7 over 2 or 4x is equal to negative 3 over 2 by the way folks if you're rusty on your fractions you do need to review one more step divide both sides by 2 divide both sides by 4 here and that should give you x is equal to 7 over 4 for this equation and from this equation we get x equal to negative 3 over 8 and so there is the answer solution set is 7 fourths or negative 3 eighths or is it it is always a good idea to check your solutions so let's do that first of all let's check to see if 7 fourths is a valid solution and always check it in your original problem not in any intermediate equations so to check this one let's stick in 7 fourths wherever we have an x there and there we have 2 times the absolute value of 3 times 7 fourths that gives us 21 over 4 minus 1 is equal to 2 times 7 fourths that gives us 7 over 2 plus that 5 we don't know yet whether this is true so I'll put a question mark over there let's keep on simplifying 2 times now let's see 21 over 4 minus 1 that gives us hmm, 17 over 4 and on this side 7 over 2 plus 5 that gives us 17 over 2 we are still not quite sure whether this equality is valid and the next step let's see absolute value of 17 over 4 is 17 over 4 so 2 times absolute value of 17 over 4 gives us 2 times 17 over 4 which gives us 17 over 2 that's my left side and here is my right side and that is great left hand side is exactly equal to my right hand side so I know for sure that 7 fourths is indeed a valid solution to my original equation let's check out 3 eighths next so now wherever we have an x we are going to stick in the negative 3 eighths in my original problem 2 times 3 times negative 3 eighths that's negative 9 eighths minus 1 equal to 2 times negative 3 eighths that's negative 3 fourths plus 5 again I'm not sure whether this equality is valid yet to be sure I need to simplify both sides entirely 2 times let's see negative 9 eighths minus 1 that gives me negative 17 over 8 equal to negative 3 fourths plus 5 that's let's see 17 over 4 2 times absolute value of negative 17 over 8 is the same thing as 2 times 17 over 8 so that gives us 17 over 4 on the left side and 17 over 4 on the right side also so that is great too that tells us that negative 3 eighths is indeed a solution of my original problem so this absolute value equation has two solutions 7 fourths and negative 3 eighths and there's my answer